Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and started off our final court day here. We started cross-examining Acro and we're getting to a new testimony here about Acro's physical state. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. I suppose I could have lifted something the size of that bust. I have a strong upper body from working out as an acrobat. He does, really. He's absolutely shredded and only working my and only my legs were injured however lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible there's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body that makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head and thus it would be unrealistic for me to drop the bust on him don't you think hmm I have no doubts in regards to this witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bust and carry it over to the window. Not to mention that he could have not have known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. And that's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. He's simply stalling. It's shameful, really. Ugh, can't let her get to me. I've got to focus. Alright, so we're just going to press around here. There is a quick solution to this, but as always, for the sake of getting more dialogue, let's start pressing about. Have you ever lifted up the bust before? No, I've never actually lifted it up with my own two hands. But I should get to it, don't you think? Can't let money outdo me on this. Money? That crazy monkey has lifted Max's bus before? Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, Mr. Dingling. I have a strong upper body from working out as an acrobat and only my legs were injured. So what have you been doing to keep in shape? Well, honestly, I've given up on training. I don't have any plans to return to the trapeze or the tightrope. You don't say. But no offense, I'm not worried about losing to you in a race or anything. Neither am I, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I wouldn't lose either, Slowpoke. I mean, Nick. Whoa, 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 how did this discussion turn to me all of a sudden? I suppose you could say that I'm stronger than the average bear. However, lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. And why is that? Because if I were to do that, I'd end up falling out of the window myself. I still haven't gotten much feeling back in my legs yet. Hmm, so you couldn't have thrown that bust out of the window. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. How long do you think your recovery will take? Hmm. <laughs> you have to remember that the nerves were severed. I'm currently undergoing some extremely intensive rehabilitation, but it's still going to take a while before I'm back to 100%. Let me remind you of another very important point. If the witness was carrying the bust, he would not have been able to see out below the window. That makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head. Why do you say it would have been impossible? Allow me to explain. You accept that if I was carrying the bust, I couldn't see out below the window? Thus, there is no way that I would know the location of the ringmaster's head. Well, I suppose you've got a point. Hey, Nick? Huh? What if you turn things around? Maybe if you think of it sort of like this. If he knew the location of the ringmaster's head, then he could drop the bust. That does make sense. Only I could prove somehow. That Acro knew the location of the Ringmaster's head without looking down. I think I've already explained things sufficiently. Thus it would be unrealistic for me to drop the bus on him, don't you think? If all he had to do was drop it, then it wouldn't have been a problem at all. If all I had to do was drop it... You're right, I could have done that. 
However, there was no way that I could score a direct hit on the ringmaster's head. Hmm, so that kind of makes your theory a bit pointless, doesn't it, Mr. Wright? Of course, strong enough to lift up the bust. The main problem is how he could have aimed for the ringmaster's head. Hmm, I wonder if he used some kind of tool to aim for the ringmaster. That's the ticket, Nick! Show them what you've got. I have to be careful. I have to find something that fits perfectly with the case. Hmm. I don't remember us finding any sort of tool, but maybe we've overlooked something. Alright, so this isn't too complicated. Just go to this statement right here. Impossible to have known the location. The thing that we want to present here is the is the wooden box. Acro, you didn't really need to lean out of the window, did you? Uh, what are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, I may add. Your silly hinting at things is pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Enough stalling. How about you show us some evidence? But... But I did such a good job at hinting. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. The key point here is the wooden box. The same wooden box that the the same wooden box that the victim was found hunched over. The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box here? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. Which means that this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bust came falling down was exactly the same moment that the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means that the answer to all of these questions is now crystal clear. You... you mean... If the bust were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box, then there would be no way that it could miss the head of the victim. R really Order, order, order. This is unbelievable. Finally, some of those loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now I just gotta keep going. There's only one way to go from here. Forward. The next question I have is who placed that one box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope and then all he had to do was lower it down. Ow! Allow me to whip some sense into you. Mr. Phoenix Wright. Ow! 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 The ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he lifted the box. That's why the box was so specially made. S specially made? Indeed. It had the most peculiar feature. And that's the weight of the box. The box has a remarkable weight. Weight? According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see. One would have to squat down, then lift it up with their body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. To lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means that no matter who you are, your head would be in approximately the same place. Fool! Does she even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you've had to say. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. Y you Did you drop it? Did you drop the bust onto the ringmaster? What are you talking about? Even if I wanted to do such a thing, I couldn't. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of this bust? I remember. Of course I remember. It was on top of the table in the cafeteria. Hmm. Then what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I could not possibly leave the lodging house by myself. Ah, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bust from my room. However, 
How could I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Explain that! Don't forget, you said there was no accomplice. Ah! Tell us exactly how the witness would have carried the bus from the cafeteria. Yep, we definitely have a problem here. There's no place to get perplexed. I've got to get my wits about me and prove how things happened once and for all. Alright, Mr. Wright. Let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bus from the cafeteria back to his room? He used... Money the monkey. Hey, monkey. Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. For instance, he, so he stole the ventriloquist's ring. So, are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own, and then brought it back home. Home. Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room! But the bust was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. Maybe you should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. Gwah! Acro. Money is a strong monkey, right? It's, it'd be easy for him to bring the bus back to your room. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I would be on the market for a new roommate. Order. Order. I said order! Miss Von Karma! Where's the bust in question at this moment? Um. 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 I... Um. I don't know. They're searching for it as we speak. Hmm. This is a strange turn of events. If that monkey did not steal the bust, then what happens to this case? Well, in that event, something else must have been used as the murder weapon. Hmm. Well... Hmm. Or maybe this bust was the murder weapon, but it was used by accident. That's possible. Maybe Akro saw Money's Mountain of Stolen Goods and thought to use one of them. Anyways. I think we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Acro was the murderer. Moron! <laughs> Mr. Wright's argument was so circular, I'm still a bit dizzy. However, his argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Ow! Don't seem, don't seem so flamboozled, especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And what is that? You should know. You forgot that your fraud of a magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. Ah! There's no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. That's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let her beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. Answer so this and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The clown saw the murderer. Who was it then? He saw Max's b- OW! I asked who the other person most saw on the scene. That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Au contraire, mon frère, it does indeed have something to do with the question. Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. Uh, how is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw just happened to be wearing a cloak. There's no reason why he couldn't attach a cloak to the bust. 
or cloak like that would easily get snagged on the bust if they came into contact. Idiot, once have right mind would put a cloak on a bust. It doesn't matter who put it on the bust. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? That question is of the utmost important in this case, don't you agree? Duh, you caught me. So let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? The answer to that would be... This, this part of the case is a bit weird. Fool! I him? You are saying that it was the victim himself? Russell Barry? That is what I am saying. He, I mean, the victim himself. Place the cloak on the bust? Place the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. Then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself! Miss Nick, do you really have a handle on all of this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all of the pieces together. There's really only one picture I can paint anyway. Alright, so you want to know what really happened that night? Let's step back in time. Acro used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust, and dangled the bust out of his bedroom window directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house, by none other than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trillo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wind box. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant that the bus hit the victim, You wait just a second there, Mr. Phoenix Wright. As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Miss Von Karma. This circus isn't over yet. Eh? With the shock of the impact, it threw up the cloak and it got snagged onto the bust. That's when the sound was heard by a witness, and he took a look out of his window. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Moe Curls, the clown. When Moe looked out of his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Acro naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Moe saw the bust being raised with the cloak dangling on it. Primarily because, in his wheelchair, he couldn't see out of his window. So he just kept pulling the bust up. And that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. Now you know how the murder actually took place. And now you know who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the scene. Acro, it could only have been you. Acro's been playing mind games with all of us. He sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? You've graced us with, you've graced us with a rather long, winded tale. But you've, do you have any evidence that you've, your fairy tale is true? Evidence? This is his court. Only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my vip. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? Nick, they say they want evidence. It just explained how there can only be one possible murder method. But there is still something unusual about Moe's eyewitness account. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay then. Use that and get out of this jam. That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that backs your claims. 
I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick to this magic case. This hard piece of evidence is the Max Galactica promo poster. The problem is Max's three symbols. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Moe's testimony. The silk hat was one, and the white roses were at the other. But the theory I just presented explains all of these contradictions. You fool! Do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Mo said yesterday. He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the bust. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Fine, you've got one, but what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Remember what the ventriloquist said to the court? He said that he witnessed the white roses on Max's chest that night, but the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said that there were no white roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Of course. I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bust. If the cloak snagged onto the bust, what happened to the white roses? Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bust. Ah! Which explains why Mo didn't see it. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bust. Order! Order! This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a little while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick. Then maybe Von Karma will finally throw in the towel. Well, so much for that theory. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes, I did. Is there something making you think that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive! This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the Ringmaster. Anyone with this relation to the circus is well aware of this. Thus, there is absolutely no way someone like this would kill the Ringmaster. Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Akro's story. Learn about his relationship with the Ringmaster and his life up until now. What do we do? There's no doubt that Akro deeply respected the Ringmaster. Akro's motive. Hmm. It seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well. However, I feel this is a good... Very well. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. This court will now take a 10-minute recess.